hiking day. So we have lots of work ahead of us. So I hope you'll join us. fire coming, Sarah? Oh, it's good and it's warming the room nicely. It is right. My feet are so cold this morning. Oh, Victoria, you did a nice job with the table. It looks so nice and happy. Oh, thank you. Well, we did so much good work yesterday. We got a lot already done. We've been so busy, but we have more work to do with us today. So, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here in the Freeman Farmhouse. It's our Thanksgiving day. We've done our baking already, so now all we have left to do is the cooking part of our work. So you can see here we've got our poultry laid out. Um, this is a special thing for this time uh, this time period. Poultry isn't a thing we eat very often, so right. it's a treat to special have. Occasion. That's exactly right, it's a special occasion indeed. So we are busy working through Esther Allen Howen's cookbook again today, and we're excited to have you along for the ride. Come on and join us. All right, let's get started. We've got a lot of work to do, all right? Yes. Thanksgiving as it were, our turkey, that's right. So we are busy making the stuffing for that. I've got crackers here that I'm going to be mixing up and pounding, pounding fine to mix with our other ingredients. Just looking at Esther Allen Howell's book here, we're going to be making stuffing number one, which is a quarter of a pound of clear fat pork chopped fine. Chopped fine? Coming on, there. Coming on quite nicely. Uh, let's see, chopped fine. Eight or ten crackers pounded fine. Now Victoria, you were just saying a minute ago about crackers. Yeah, it's my thought when you look at how many crackers are in receipts that the crackers people are dealing with in the early 19th century are probably a bit larger than the crackers we have at grocery today. A deal larger than this little <laughs> friend here. So we're going to err on, instead of uh, 8 or 10, we're going to go with closer to 30, I think, just so we, we don't want to run out. And I've never, I've never uh, complained about having too much stuffing in oh, a bowl no. of poultry before, so that's fine. a pretty big bird to fill. So. That's quite so, quite so. So um, beyond that, we need the crackers, two eggs, one or two eggs, excuse me, one cup of flour, one pint of milk or water, sage, pepper, and salt to suit your taste. So we're going to get cracking, as it were, uh, <laughs> and be back in just a minute. Did you pick up two eggs for the stuffing for me, Jacob? Yes. Thank you. Salt. Are you okay with a good I'm happy to. You have a new. Oh, you've already got it threaded and everything. You are good to me. And I just doubled the thread up just to make it a, a little bit stronger. Fine idea. We're just using a plain sewing needle to do this. Um, I know today there's all kinds of. You can buy a trussing needle and special twine, things like that. Um, in the 19th century, it's sort of a make do and mend situation where we're going to get by with what we have to hand. So that stuffing looks really handsome, actually. It smells so good, too. Good. All right. Do you want to start the stitching? I'll hold it. Yes, absolutely. So I'm just going to take a little stitch through here and another to anchor it. And though this might seem tedious, it's totally 
worth the effort. Once we put the bird up to roast, it will be turning around so the stitching, be it if you're roasting it or boiling it, will keep the stuffing inside so it doesn't fall all over. Blind him was good, or <laughs> a, a, count, a space back stitch, maybe? No. I mean, if you can embroider a couple little flowers as you go right. up, that would be nice. Well, it is Thanksgiving after all. It's our <laughs> best holiday, so we have to be, do our very best work. Let's see. Brought a sharp Do you want a thimble? No, I think it's all right. I don't think you can thimble with it, my thing. There we go. All right. Nearly there. We'll do the same thing to our little chicken too, since that one will get boiled. Um, don't want the stuffing to fall out in the boiling water either. It'd be exactly. nice because it's less stitches. Exactly. <laughs> I just keep the same thread. You will have enough. So too, it's just a wee thing. So. All right. Just because it's a holiday, no excuse to not be frugal. That's right. And there you go. Yeah, I'll put a little stitch down here to anchor it. Ready for it. And as you would say, who can say fairer than that? And who can say fairer than that? That's exactly right. Quite so. You. One more little stitch to anchor. And Perfect. presto, we are ready to go. Grab a knife. knife there, all right. Excellent. Just stuff it. There we are. Perfect. Splendid. Thank you, my dear. Nicely right. stitched. Let's see. I'm going to stitch up this. I'll stitch up the chicken. Um, do you have the reflector ready? Yes. Let me grab it. I'll bring it up. And Very then good. Let me get that. Put me in. Also grab some kitchen string because we might have to trust up that turkey's legs a little bit just to make sure he fits and can go around without catching. All right. Very good. Very good. Oh, good. I got the turkey about halfway trussed, so oh, yeah. I'll be ready to go in a minute. That's looking really nice as well. Very good. Thank you. So we'll be actually cooking the, the turkey in a reflector oven today. So um, nowadays when we think of roasted meats, we think of things in the oven that have been, you know, sometimes we'll cook turkey in a bag for Thanksgiving, you know, even. Um, but in the 19th century, and for times beyond that, roasting was really done in front of a fire. Um, oven roasted meats um, only really come into fashion or come into being, I guess I should say, a little bit after this time period when people have more ovens in their houses, right? So really the fashion thing to do is to roast in an oven like this one. This is a tin reflector oven. So it's something that would be quite expensive given that the, the sheer number of tin that it involves. So it might be a very kind of prized possession that the family has. So um, we're excited to use that today. It works just like a rotisserie oven, except that the heat, this front, this open face here, will be faced to the fire. So the heat of the fire will be reflected around it and therefore it's a reflector oven, a reflector rotisserie, or a tin kitchen, you might call it as well. So. Jamie, will you lend me your finger? Oh, uh, if I must. You give me all the hard work to do. <laughs> Just don't tie me in. Right. Thank you. Very well, you're welcome. All right. And Sarah, you're trimming that ham. It looks yes. wonderful. What's that for? To get all of that creosote off the outside. It's Excellent. been up there to preserve it. Excellent. It's funny how a lot of times we have to put things on something to preserve it. The creosote is going to preserve that ham. It's coming, of course, from our smokehouse. The smoke from our fire, or our, our yeah, well, I guess it's a fire. Um, it's going to, our smoky fire is going to coat the meat to protection. Uh, and we're taking it back off because we don't really want to eat that. So. And that ham is going to go into the chicken that we've stuffed there as well. And the cabbage and, you just got. That's right. And these cabbages I have here into a pot to boil as one of our uh, second meat dishes uh, for the day. What is it you're doing there, Victoria? I'm just making sure that once I put the uh, spit in so that I won't be able to see it, I have a general idea where these little spots are because these skewers will go through here and that's what will keep our turkey steady so as we rotate it, he'll turn too and we'll just keep flopping it out. <laughs> that's a good idea. All right. Um, all right, well, I'm going to get these cleaned up and we'll be ready to we're crack them along. That's great. Huh. 
How's the fit? Looks like it's going to fit perfect. Let's just make sure we can turn it. Perfect. In front of the fire, she goes. Or he goes, I guess. white pudding for our baked pudding. I had to keep myself straight. We have our baked pudding. Sarah, that's our boiled pudding. That yes, it there. is. That looks really lovely. It's and that's really got lovely. some of the suet we chopped in there. And is that raisins? Yes, it is. Lovely. Oh, it's so good. <coughs> uh, Victoria, what are you up to? I'm peeling potatoes for both mashed potatoes and for the turnip sauce. Uh, so has anyone thought to change the water on the ham lately? Oh, no, I haven't done that. Right. Oh, it's boiling quite well. Right. So. I can take a pause and do that. We don't want it to get too salty. Got to put a little bit of that salt out. All right. Okay, Troy, while you do that, maybe Sierra and I will pack this pudding bag here. Okay, I already found it for you. Thank so you. Ready to go, and your water is breaking, so. Lovely. You ready to go right on? Two hands for that. Dirty. Not dirty in the doing of this, right? It's really important to butter that because it makes an absolute mess if you don't. I love boiled puddings like this with suet in them, or baked puddings even with suet in them, because the suet uh, is, is cattle fat, it's, it's the fat of a cow, of a beef. And so what we're going to do, is once that's chopped in there, it's going to sort of render and, and melt inside there, and then these nice little pockets of, kind of uh, air that will leaven the pudding nicely. But also, I think it gives a nice, almost meaty sort of flavor to the dish as well. Nice, rich mouthfeel, too. Yes, yes, kind of buttery almost. So yeah. It's delicious. Um, I'm interested to see this pudding, particularly the one that Sarah, you're working with, doesn't have any sugar in it. Is that right? That's right. All right. I'm interested to see how that turns out. I think that it might end up being a little bit more. But it is meant to be eaten with the sauce. I was just right. going to say, it must have a sweet oh. sauce over the top, then. Yes, I would hope so. And that, the reason that have fit that in there any better, I don't think. No, <laughs> they're so expensive, so dear, and we spent all that time stoning them. That's well. it. All right. Mmm, that chicken and that ham smells so good. No. I've got my eye on that cabbage too. I love boiled cabbage. I know that's very 19th century of me, but I just. I oh, I love boiled cabbage too. I love cabbage in all forms. <laughs> I'm in good company then. That's excellent. All right, well, I guess we'll just keep working on. Um, in fact, if you folks would like to, it's such a nice snowy day outside. Maybe you'd like to look outside for a minute and enjoy the weather. All right, let's see, we'll almost all that in there. As the potatoes are peeled and washed. What are you working on? I'm getting the oysters. Ooh, first try. Do we want their liquor? I think we could save it. Why not? So I get you a little cup for it, a little dish. Yeah, or a, how about actually the glass plate with the edge? I think if I put it there. All right. There you are. All right, these potatoes are good and washed. Oh, it looks very nice. We just need some uh, some snow to pack around on them to pack <laughs> to have go. them, and a little Worcestershire sauce or a little hot sauce, whatever people put on them. So. And now I want to sort of sip it off <laughs> like they do at the coast. <laughs> That's right. Very good. All right. Oh, you know what we need to check is our uh, pudding, our baked pudding here. This is our plain pudding. 
So let me see. I'll get down there and have a look at that. We can also check the turkey while we're at it, I think. Okay. I can smell the turkey. It's smelling wonderful. It is, isn't it? <gasps> oh, look at looks that. looks perfect. Oh, it's very, very you soft. Want a knife to I do want a little it? knife. Do you have one? Hold on, let me get a few one that hasn't been in an oyster. <laughs> <laughs> That's my preference. This one of those pace of the, of the pudding tastes just so very oyster-esque. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go in here where there's a little spot. Oh, look at it bounce. It looks, it's very well done. All right, let me see. I'll get two edible ones. See the beer? Very well. And would you throw one on the table for me as well so I can set it down? Yes. The little wind spot Oh, yeah, you. that looks so good. Did you all get to see? Doesn't that look nice? Oh. I'm pleased as punch. All right, let's see here. Now I'm down here, I'm gonna have a look at the turkey here and see how it's doing as well. It smells so good. Oh, oh my goodness, look at it. The skin is kind of cracked a little bit, but it's looking very good. Should we give it a turn? I think so. All oh right. my gosh, look at all the drip. I was just gonna say, it's dripping so nicely. All right, so I'm gonna give it a little turn here. Do you want another? No, I'm all right, it's not that hot. We'll go there, and then Oh, that's quite good. Did you hear that dripping, all the coming out of there? I'm thinking right around here, do you think? Yeah, that looks good. Very good. Turkey's done, the chicken and the ham and the cabbage are done. Victoria, what were you just working on there? Just finishing the gravy sauce. Gravy sauce, excellent. We have the dripping here for the gravy, so we should start that. I actually have this pan here, we can start that in. Perfect. Um, and then the oyster sauce is over the fire, and that's the very last thing. That's the last thing. We're so close. Okay, well, Sarah, what are you working on here? I have mashed potatoes and I have mashed the turnips. Oh, the turnip sauce, yes. The um, squash, I was just making sure it was warming up nicely. Is it getting warm? I know it was ice cold when I put it on there. <clears throat> it may still be a little bit cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's just company, so, which I think, actually, I think I hear someone coming up the way now. Maybe we should go and have a look and see if that's them coming up. Do you, Do you think, think so? Yeah.